Today we're going to be looking at a gem called LOL DBA. LOL DBA is a small package of RAID tasks that can scan your application models and display a list of columns that you should probably be indexed. So to get started we'll install the gem LOL DBA. To get a list of all the indexes that you may want to add to your application, you can type LOL DBA DB find indexes. And this will run through your different models to see what indexes that you may want to add. In our case, it came back with three different indexes that it suggests that we add. On our comments table for the user ID and post ID, and then on our post table, the user ID. So to create these indexes, we can just run a Rails generate migration, give it a name saying that we are going to be adding in indexes, and then we'll just copy in these indexes and we'll paste them into our migration file. So run rake db migrate and your indexes will be created. However, you shouldn't just blindly copy from LOL DBA's return and add that to your application because it's not going to really dig deep into your models to see based on what you have the necessary indexes. However, it's just a blind suggestion that you may want to add. So for this example where we have our comments and a comment belongs to a user and a comment also belongs to a post. And let's say you have a situation where you only want the user to have one comment per post. Then you can create a validation like a user ID with a uniqueness scope of the post ID and that presence is true. So it is requiring that the user and the post is present for a comment. And then this uniqueness scope makes it to where the user ID and the post ID, that combination has to be unique within this comment table. However, if you remember from our indexes, the comments is not creating a unique relationship between the user ID and the posts. So you may create a index like this, where you have the user ID and the post ID, and you pass unique true. Another cool gem is called Squasher, and this isn't really about your database performance, but it's more around compressing the old migrations within your Rails application. And Squasher will basically compress all your old migrations into a single file. And it does this by creating a sample database or just a test database, and it runs the migrations up to a certain point on that test database, and then copies the schema that it receives and then creates a new migration file. And this is helpful because if you have a large project with a lot of different migrations, then running a rake db migrate might take a few seconds, or even creating a new database might take a few minutes, and that is because Rails is loading all the migration files. So Squasher will compress all of these migration files into a single migration, and you can go from that point forward with all your new migration files. However, keep in mind that this initial migration file that it creates is not revertible. So from that point and backwards, you won't be able to roll back your database. So to add the Squasher gem, just run gem install Squasher. So from the Rudermail Rails application, if I want to squash all my migrations from 2017 and prior, I can run Squasher 2017. This will create the temporary database, it'll migrate my database to this temporary database, and then it'll copy the schema back to my original migrations. It'll then ask if I want to keep the Squasher database, I'll just say no. And then it'll ask if I want to clean up the database from my old schema records, and then you can say yes or no if you want to keep them, or if you want Squasher to just remove them. So now looking back at my migrations, I only have one file instead of my several files prior. And you'll see that the def up will create the tables and the def down will raise a active record irreversible migration saying that the initial migration is not revertible. And you can get a list of options from Squasher by just running Squasher at the command line. And then you'll see where you can run Squasher, then pass in the year slash month and slash day to go from a certain point in time. And if you want to run a dry mode where you're not actually deleting the migration files, you can pass an option dash D. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.